Hey guys, I'm doing another video because I decided, oh, I'm going to do a top five action figures in my collection. And granted, um, since I sold a good 99% of my collection, my collection is small, so. Um, and this is just my opinion and I'm just gonna throw it out there like that. But yeah, so, and as you guys are seeing in the, um, in the video is what you're who you're seeing is Moira McTaggart. She is not part of the um, top five list. I just have her on here because I recently bought her today and I took advantage of the Target deal that's going on right now from the time I'm recording this and I'm from the USA so I don't know if this affects anywhere else but by March 13th um, that's the deadline or the end for the coupon for toys um, for 25% off. You get 25% off on any toy, which there are some exceptions like the bigger stuff or whatever, but I got this Marvel Legends for like 15 bucks and I thought it was a good deal. So <laughs> yeah, and I won't keep you guys in suspense about showing the top five action figures or maybe I am, I don't know. <laughs> like. I didn't really think this through about how to do this video, so <clears throat> excuse me. But yeah, um, let's just go with number five. Let's just get started with it. Uh, number five will be uh, NECA. Oops, hit the camera. NECA uh, Spyro the Dragon figure, which beautiful looking figure. And let's just move Mora to the side over here. And it's a beautiful looking figure. It's well done. I love it. Looks just like Spyro from the Reignited Trilogy. So, yeah. And the thing about NECA is that uh, NECA is not really durable. That's why I'm not a big fan of their alien or their predator stuff, mostly. Uh, when I buy NECA stuff, it's usually video game characters or Godzilla. That's pretty much what I collect for the most part. Some of their movie figures look cool, but... Uh, yeah, number five is Spyro, and I think he looks great, and I guess I'm basing off this list about how well the characters look, I don't know. And just the fact that this is just more of, it's not really an objective kind of video, so I'll just throw that out, but I think he looks really good. My only issue is stuff like, well, apparently, you know, his neck move, moves fine, because usually when I pose him, or go or do something crazy, it tends to pop off, but apparently it works fine. But yeah, that's Spyro, number five. <laughs> this is a really crappy video, but that's the appeal, right? <laughs> uh, number four, it will be another NECA figure, just because. Uh, like I said, my collection is small, it's not big, but uh, number four will be uh, NECA's Crash Bandicoot figure, and this Crash Bandicoot figure is awesome. I love him. I think he looks great. And like I said, he looks like the game C come to life. I think the only gripes is the mohawk. The mohawk should have been a little more red, but everything about him, he looks really good. So, and. Like I said with NECA, these are more of the durable NECA figures so far. Like, I wouldn't recommend, like, bashing these guys or throwing them across the room, of course. They're not that durable, but for NECA standards, I think these guys are somewhat durable. Like, to the point that I'm not afraid to, like, mess around with the articulation and moving him, you know? Like, he moves great and all, so, like that. Usually when it comes to their Predator figures, it's a nightmare, but yeah, that's number four. Uh, number three, I will go with uh, Peter B. Parker, Marvel Legends Peter B. Parker. And as you guys can see, I am using a soft goods um, jacket on this guy. And the reason why is for posability, just because I'm not a fan of the let me just get the accessory. The green um, rubber jacket. Like, it's still somewhat flexible, but if you're a toy photographer like me and if you're trying to do some poses like this, see? Like, it's 
stuff like that or do any Spider-Man poses. He's supposed to be, you know, mobile or flexible. That's the whole point of Peter Parker, so, or Spider-Man. That's why pretty much primarily this. He can do this because he cannot do it if he has this on and I'm not gonna fight with this jacket, okay? So, but overall for the most part, like I said, he looks exactly like he does from the film. My only gripe with how he looks, I don't know why it's not focusing. Maybe it's because the other character's in the background. Let me just do that. There you go. My only gripe is that this and the Mafex figure does not have a broken nose, which that's the whole point of the character design. He's been at it for like a long time and you know, his face is not gonna look pretty. I think this face is it's just a broken nose. I know it's not that big of a deal, but it's part of the character. And especially if you're trying to make something based on a film, it should be accurate. But the reason why he's ranked, you know, number three is because I just love taking photos of this guy. Just because of the articulation he has and, you know, and that's pretty much it. Like, if you check my Instagram account, um, I tend to take a lot of pictures of this. And he comes with a soda and... and awesome accessories I and I also do hear that he does have a hard time standing which he does right now sometimes he'll stand like this but give it like a good 20 minutes into it. at least for me in my experience he's gonna fall over so yeah if you want to display this guy he's gonna need a display stand but overall like I said great figure and I recommend a soft goods jacket which I bought from eBay so I recommend that but yeah figure looks great and number two which I love quite a bit and it's the DC McFarlane DC Multiverse Superman animated series figure I think he looks great and I know a lot of people have their gripes with this line and the fact that it's out of scale or whatever but personally I think this is perfect especially for Superman I'm not sure about the other characters but for Superman he has to tower everybody as you can see right here like let me put him next to or behind Peter Parker and yeah and he stands on his own too especially with the stylized design that you know the animated series was going for and like I said right there standing by side by side uh, there you go like Superman should tower over everyone and the reason why I chose him is because you know, I recommend this or the Action Comics 1000 Superman if you just want a really good, decent, articulated, uh, standard Superman. I chose this one because it's my favorite incarnation of Superman and I grew up with this version and it, this show will be on March 17th on HBO Max, which even though I already have the DVD copies, but I'm excited to revisit them on HBO Max. But yeah, like I said, he looks great. He looks exactly like the cartoon. Um, I know people complain about the mullet which in the cartoon it looked fine just because of the fact that it was flat in the cartoon but since this is 3d or three-dimensional it does come off looking weird and as you guys can see on the camera that his skin the skin color are different like from his head and his neck which is weird because in person you won't notice it but on camera it picks it up which is crazy but like I said and how many Superman figures do we really get that he looks up while flying? We don't get a lot of Superman figures that can do that, you know? So, yeah. And this is one of the few figures that I don't recommend modifying uh, the cape. Usually when I get a Superman figure or Batman figure, I have to modify the cape and make it a soft goods. Like, for example, I, I buy the cape on eBay and then I glue it on or attach it myself. But, or sometimes I'll make it myself, but that's rarely done. But, um, yeah, but for this cape, I think it looks great. I know it's a little bit short because I remember in the cartoon, it's a little bit more down here, but I think this cape looks fine just because of the fact that, um, I don't mind Superman with the short cape and the way it's sculpted and flowing in the wind, it's perfect for standing, you know? So the cape looks like it's flowing or if he's flying, the cape looks fine, like, like, flowing like that, or whatever, like this, but, yeah, 
I think he looks great. So that's number two. And number one, it's kind of obvious knowing what number one is. So let me put soups in the back. Let me stand him up a bit. And number one is Zarya from Overwatch. I just think this is the best engineered figure ever. I had so much fun with this figure and it's the most durable Hasbro figure Hasbro ever made. Usually Marvel Legends have their hits and misses. Some of their Marvel Legends do have like um, their issues, but uh, the Zarya figure, she, she poses like a dream. She does everything I wanted her to do. I think the only tight joints are like her legs, her knees, and they tend to pinch you. But overall, um, I think she is great. And even if you're not a big fan of the video game, I'm not a big fan of the video game myself, like in terms of gameplay, but I do love the character design. And um, Zarya is my favorite out of all the character designs. The only time I've ever played this game was if um, Blizzard has them for free, free to play for the weekend, and that's the only time I ever played it. But overall, I recommend this figure. Even if you if you've never played the game or or whatever, if you're a gamer or if you're I don't know, if you just like quality, well-engineered action figures. This is it. And I do have a particle cannon. It's in an accessories bag right here. But yeah, um, I think this figure is great. I think. This figure is my favorite of my collection, and what you see here is basically my collection. Will I grow it again? Not necessarily, but um, yeah, this is pretty much it. And I, I'm already past 10 minutes. We're already at the 12 minute mark, so I'm already too far into this video. But yeah, I just decided to do a video just because, uh, but yeah, I thought it was a good idea. So. I guess I'll see you guys uh, next time. Let me just focus this and boom.